You know, you, you got through today better than any other day, and even though it's Monday because you knew tonight was going to be tonight. So you came through the day expecting to be in his presence tonight. Isn't that good? Oh, yeah. So, we got this. And knowing that uh, since he, uh, remember last night we said we we're going to come back into that corporate anointing, and that's what we're doing. We're coming back into that corporate anointing, and it's, it's good that uh, our Father is seeking a people who are going to worship him in spirit and truth. And so that's who we are. We're going to worship him. He's here. He's, he never leaves. And so when we, you know, it's amazing. Sometimes we're going to prayer and we said, okay, let's get ready because we're going to pray to the Father. And the Father says, I'm already here. And so what you, just, you just start praying. You say, Father, we just recognize that you're here and we're going to have a good time with you. And uh, we thank you for speaking to people. But we want to welcome people here tonight. We want to welcome you who are watching on live stream here at Transformation Church and our Word and Spirit Conference. This is the last night and uh, of the conference, but it never ceases, does it? We, we keep walking with Him all year long and, uh, and just start listening to the Spirit as He speaks to us and give us directions with new truths. Whatever you got last night was last night's truth. Tonight you come something, because what he does is he builds from last night. So every truth, he builds upon that truth. He doesn't say, you know, tonight I'm going to start all over with another truth. He may bring a message that's different, but the truth that's in your life that needs to be working to get into getting your in the likeness of Christ is always perpetual and it's always building. And so whatever you come, you come here and you may hear a new message, but the message he's going to bring to you is the one that's going to help you live life better and get through the challenges that you're in now. And so just have an ear to hear, and he'll, he'll perpetuate that. He said, oh, that goes along with last night. Yes. And so, well, I'm going to pray, and we're going to get started. And I thank you, those of you, again, who are watching us on uh, live stream and we appreciate so much that you're tuning in that one day soon you'll come and get into a corporate anointing. And uh, if it's because you can't for some medical reason, I'm believing you can because that medical condition is going to be touched. Amen. And you'll be able to be here. And so uh, there's not an excuse. It just means there's a hindrance. And we're taking authority of that. And so it's good. Well, Father, we thank you for your presence once again. We... have we, your family, have gathered here just to uh, be in your, in your presence and your anointing. And, Father, I thank you so much uh, for the obedience that I see in this room tonight. Because today, sometime today or recently, they had to have an ear to hear to show up tonight. And because of their obedience of that, you're going to give them something unique. They're going to have an encounter. They're going to have a word. They're going to have something that's going to cause them to embrace life with excitement because the God of now is speaking to us. And we thank you for doing that. And we give you praise in Jesus Christ's name. Well, let's stand up and let's uh, let Pastor James just uh, take over for a while. All right, with the Holy Ghost. Yes. yes. Good afternoon. How is everybody doing this morning or this evening? I'm used to the morning thing. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's, let's just go into some, just, just let's worship the Father just for a moment here. Can we do that? Can we do that? Can we just lift up our hand and just acknowledge him right now? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We acknowledge you, Father. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love the Son, Jesus Christ. And we want just to declare your goodness and declare your victory as we celebrate life, as we celebrate the kingdom life. Since we thank you this evening, we're here and we're we're hungry and we're thirsty, Father, and we want more of you. And when we say we want more of you, I know that it's going to take more surrendering. I'm ready to surrender. I'm ready to surrender in areas, Father God, that you are the one, that you're the one is able, Father God. To, we just give it all to you, Lord God. We have faith, Father God. We have faith, Father Lord. And we honor you. We bless you in this place, Father God. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this place. 
Have your way as we position ourselves before you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not here to entertain. We're not here to perform. Hallelujah. But we are here to worship the Father in spirit and truth. Hallelujah. So we thank you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have you guys enjoyed a Daryl jo Jordan's saxophone? Yes. Come on now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, Adele, are you ready, sir? Why don't you bless us? Amen. They can stand, they can see, they can walk, whatever they want to do. We have the freedom in this place. Come on, let's stand in the presence of the Lord. Let's give him glory in this place. Hallelujah. Woo. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. Oh, how beautiful are you, Lord? It's your your love oh how glorious are you Lord it's your power it was the cross oh that saved me rescued me come on now just a moment there anybody here free set me free Give you glory, glory, come on. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory, Jesus, Jesus. I give you glory, I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. I give you glory, glory. What you say, Jesus? 
Come on, oh, how beautiful. Oh, how beautiful. Come on now. Are you, Lord? It's your word. It's your word. It's your love. Tell them you're glorious, Lord. You, Lord. It's your power. It's your power. It was a cross. It was your cross. Can I get a witness? Oh, that saved me. You rescued me. Just a moment. Just a moment. Yeah. I've been set free. Set me free. Hey. I give you glory, glory.
on, this is part. This is yours. Here we go. I know who I am because the I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because the I am. Come on, church. Who I am. I am who I am because I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because I am tells me who I am. I am who I am because I am tells me who I am. I Oh, the 
Come on. Great. How great are you, Lord? How great are you, Lord? There is no one like my Lord. There is no one like my Jesus. How great. How great. How great are you, Lord? want to surrender it all to him tonight. and sing songs and then we really don't know the depth and the breadth of that until you have a visitation from that God that's that great. And last night we had an encounter and a visitation of that God. Whenever he moves in our midst and he heals bodies, and he restores souls, he brings life to people. The world just, they just don't know how to recognize that this God that we studied in the Bible is a God that's now, and he's moving in our midst. The super things, the supernatural things that happened last night could only mean we had a visitation from God. And if we don't, if we don't start embracing and recognizing that, He's going to search a place that will. And so, I'm just saying, last night, I don't know about you, but we had a God that came in our midst whenever there's that many people who, who stand out, out of obedience of the Spirit and allow God to touch them through that obedience. So no longer can we just sing a song and say how great God is with an anticipating He's going to come when He's already here. And we have to live like that. We live because when we made that choice to come in this kingdom, we started living kingdom-minded. And what happened is we don't have to wait for a God to come. God is here. Now we're waiting for Him to take control of His kingdom but until he does take control of that kingdom, we have a God that's ministering to us now. And whenever you have a touch and whenever you have a, uh, something that goes off in your physical body or so, it 
acknowledge that you're God. That's your Father. How many of us have walked in life and just said, well, it's no good service. Let's go back and sing some more praise and worship. See, what we have to walk in is a reality of that God that's living with us today. And it's an act of your will to choose to believe that reality is now. We don't have to wait to die. We don't have to pray for him to come because he's already here. He's waiting for us to be revived. If you understand that, then tonight when we worship him, praise him, we come with an anticipation and say, Father, what are you doing tonight? Lord, we know you're you're praying, you're interceding for this service. And then the promise of the Father in Jesus' name said, I am here if you allow me to move. And I am the Spirit of God. Everything that I'm saying, you have to bring that into captivity in your soul. So your spirit will be stirred. Then you embrace the creator, the Father that loves. What an, what an awesome thing happened last night. As pastor, I'm very humbled that my God, my Father, came and visited us and use the messenger and use the body to function. And our eyes got to see. Our ears got to hear. And our bodies got to feel. We must embrace this every opportunity we have. The knowledge that that's a God that loves us today. He's never stopped. That's a God that hasn't left us. He's always been here. But we have to bring our thoughts into captivity, and we've got to bring our, our spirit into alignment with what he's doing in ours so we can recognize that, so we don't have to have this anticipation that something's going to happen years from now, but it's happening today. It's, it's happening tonight. His presence here now, because what we just did was we gave God glory. So when you come into this corporate, when you come into this, have an attitude that says, I'm not singing a song. I'm praising my Father. I'm not singing a chorus. I'm singing a love message to my Father. And see, when you start in embracing that, something happens to you. Because your lifestyle and everything else starts changing. And you said, wow. You know what really happens is this. I understand now that all things are possible. Because I believe and he made it real. Because he was here last night. James, sing one more song before we, before we transition. Just be led.
Come on, give him glory. I give glory to show you what I'm going to do with that paper. Because I believe you're supposed to come and preach the word now. Right? We've got other things that we have to get done, but he's saying let you go. You're the messenger. What more can we have? And, you know, if you feel like you need to give an offering or something for tonight, bring it up here and lay down while he's preaching. It's not going to disturb him. Amen. More than amen. Uh -huh. yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. Well, let me just say something about that offering. And I think that I think it's so significant because it's not the offerings that make the word work. It's the word that makes the offerings work. Huh? It's not the offerings that make faith work. It's faith that makes the offerings work. Huh? Yeah, it's not prayer that makes faith work. It's faith that makes prayer work. So anything is possible. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! If you can believe it. Ooh, I'm hot already. <laughs> glory to God. Mm. Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. Seeing as how by the Spirit I see where we're headed, and I realize that uh, where we were last night may be doubled, tripled, and quadrupled up on. You may not be sober or sane enough to understand what I'm going to say by the end. So I might ought to go ahead. Don't go over there just yet. So I might. So I might ought to go ahead and do this real quick. Glory to God, <laughs> so that you can comprehend it. Praise the Lord. We've got some things that we do that are our assignment, and our assignment in the earth. We are sowers of the word, reproducers of revelation knowledge. And if you can give me a little bit more, brother, so I don't have to drive. Hello, can you give me a little bit more? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Um, I've been preaching for uh, days on end. And tomorrow night I preach in Houston and I keep on preaching. So glory to God. It's not the man that makes the mic work. It's the mic that's supposed to do the work. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. <clears throat> All right. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you so very, very much. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah! How shall I say this? Um, as quickly as I possibly, yeah, I'll do it that way. This is as simple as I can make it. What you experienced last night was a manifestation of the anointing, the power, the overflow, the outflowing of what we flew here with after three days of a partner meeting. This is the best way I know how to say it. 
The Lord told me if I've ever been sure, if I've ever been sure that the Lord told me to have a meeting. Would you agree, Brother J.D.? You've been around a while. Oh, yeah. uh, I don't mean like forever like Methuselah. I'm talking about <laughs> around us a little while. <laughs> Would you agree? <laughs> um, so I was praying by the Spirit of God, and I'm going to head there tonight for just a few minutes uh, dealing with it on a minuscule scale because the vastness of it is access into what belongs to us in the unsearchable riches of Christ. I was praying over into that meeting and there's some things that the Lord had asked me to do for a long time and I would step toward it and couldn't, the atmosphere, uh, the governments, uh, the, where we were, it just, the utterance just couldn't happen. And it did. Glory to God. We broke over into the beginnings of it. And um, so I was praying about those things before, in the meeting, before the meeting, and what the Lord called it was, because it was a partnership meeting, but the partnership meeting wasn't designed to get people there so that they could, did, did I purposefully in any one meeting take an offering? In every meeting, it was just suddenly, spontaneously supernatural, was it not? The anointing produced it. See, in the kingdom, when you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things get added. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. The anointing produced it. Yes, sir. Things are brought to you in the kingdom. And uh, everything's accessible in the kingdom through the name of Jesus. Yes, Glory yes, to God. Yes, Woo! That name through faith in that name. Last night we were talking about faith and strength. I didn't get full circle there, but you do realize that the, the apostle said this statement. He said, when that man at Gate Beautiful, maybe I just need to kind of kind of preach my way into this and just hand this off, because I'm going to do very succinctly, but you need to understand this is tied to what we're doing. When they walk through Gate Beautiful, when they walk through the Gate Beautiful, he said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I. There's the anointing on it already. Unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Immediately, his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood. He was born that way 41 years before. Had never walked. Jesus had passed through that gate. In one moment of that name used by faith in that name, 41 years were instantly restored. And he was put back where he would have been had he been born normal over four decades before. In that name, Inside that name is all recreative restoration. It will put you back where you would have been had you never had a setback. You'll go through the fire and no smell of smoke on your clothes. You understand? And so he can and does restore the years. The canker worm, the pommel worm, the locust, and the caterpillar of Eden. Restoration of the years. There's no place you can find Joel 2, Ephesians 5, when he talks about redeeming the time, buying up every opportunity because the days are evil. Restoration of the years, Joel 2, restore restoration of the years. You can't find anywhere where there's a prophecy or a promise from the Holy Spirit through the prophets or through the Word of God to where it is not immediately in context that if the years are going to be restored, it's done so by an outpoured spirit. You can't find it separated in the Scripture. So that means if things are going to get accelerated, it's going to be what we had in here last night doing it. Because it's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. 
Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And he's already moving in here like a river. The clouds are already swirling here right now. <clears throat> so, um, hallelujah. Amen. So for three days, we talked about this at home before we got here. And we got to a place. We got there. And I'll, I'll explain it to you in just a moment. But let me just, I just feel so strongly impressed to go to this scripture. Because it's going to mean everything for the future of this ministry. John 14, 26. And I want it up in front of everybody's eyes. I want you to see this. But the comforter. Look now, look now. Which is the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Don't stop there. Whom the Father, look now, will send. Yes, sir. Look now. In my name. The name is the portal for everything the Holy Ghost does. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That name, through faith in that name, can do anything. the portal so I had an experience some years ago because I've been preaching toward this a while uh, I've had a couple of times where I was just almost out of my body one time I was so many miracles broke loose and I'll elongate this if I tell you the details but by the end of that meeting with all of the creative miracles that took place that were astounding they wound up just dragging me out of there and throwing me in the recliner at the pastor's parsonage and I couldn't put English words together. So out there, yeah, I wasn't sure I could get back. For two hours, I couldn't string two English words together. I'd, they'd ask me a question. I could comprehend what they were asking. But I'd open up and try to answer the question, and it'd come out in tongues. <laughs> and it took a while. I was hung between two worlds. It took a while to get back. I've had that happen to me twice. And, and uh, I knew, though, it was accessible. But you just can't, you can't do that at your own will. You can't. People don't often don't qualify, and you have these experiences, and, and, uh, and the world mostly, you almost have to live enough time and have enough track behind you that you build your life on the Word because the Word is the foundation, and you've got enough track record that folks know you're not goofy, Come on. Come on. that the Word actually is the, is, the, is the Spirit. See, we have to understand the Word of God is alive and power, it's alive. This isn't a romance novel. This isn't the newspaper. This isn't words on a page. You're, you're holding in your lap the voice of I am. And his spirit is all in those pages. Glory to God. And so the word without the Holy Ghost is nothing more than the law written in stone. This New Testament is the administration of the Spirit. That's how it's administrated, and we're able ministers of it. We're supposed to administer it through the Holy Ghost. He's the one. Praise the Lord. He writes it on our heart. Now, I say that to say I had that experience where I was laid back in the bed, and some of these guys heard it uh, just recently. It's last weekend, but I looked up, and I saw it. almost looked science fiction almost. I mean, it's like the ceiling disappeared. And I saw something, and it opened up. Inside of it was like a sapphire blue, just pulsating. It's like it'd come in and out of that portal. And it's like, and, and everything in me, I, I kept feeling it. It's almost like it was sucking me upward, almost like the old Star Trek. But, but I, I was trying to go, but I couldn't get there. I just couldn't, I couldn't. It's like something was holding me down. I couldn't. And I knew. And I knew what it was. He didn't even have to say it. In the spirit realm, you get a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom. When you have an experience like that, it comes I can't explain it, but you are a spirit. He's a spirit, and so he can make you to know. That's what revelation knowledge is. In Philippians 3, which I see Philippians 3 is up here, and in Ephesians 3, the Apostle Paul talks about this, particularly in Ephesians 3, he says he made me to know by revelation. Revelation knowledge is something you're made to know by God that didn't come through your five physical senses. 
And so I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at this. What I, the only thing I can describe it as is a portal, and I knew that it, it was the name of Jesus. And I knew if I could just get in there, anything was possible. And that these other two experiences I'd had, that's what happened. I got inside there for a little bit. And I'm telling you, oh, glory to God. So uh, uh, we preached right to the edge of it before we got here. And, and, and much of what you experienced last night was that in manifestation. Even though we were talking about faith, what released it is the faith that was in the room. Because the name manifested. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, glory to God. So the Lord spoke to us at the last of that and said for us to create. Because he, he named it. I was praying getting into the meeting and what he called it was. Because there's so many things on partnership. I wanted to talk about the law of anointing of increase and all the laws that govern it. But that's almost like step two, three, four, and five. Those come by default if you just get into the understanding that it's not a program or a gimmick. It is a spiritual law. And that for the earth to have reproduction and life, God had to create Adam a partner. He, he created the world to be replenished, subdued, empowered, and dominated by a God-given created partnership. He says, it's not good that man should be alone. It's been that way ever since. That's why there's many members but one body. Amen. I mean, in this meeting, there's partnership. Now you, well, I, let me just make a couple of statements and then we'll just jump right in here based upon the platform we're creating. You may not be right now, currently, uh, our monthly partner. Let's just put it that way. I'll just use us as an example. I mean, some of you are certainly, and we're so, so very grateful. This ministry is. But here's the thing. Whether you're our partner or not, you're absolutely called to be somebody's partner. It's impossible for you to be in the planet without being God divinely connected. If you're born again in the kingdom, you are supernaturally connected. And typically you're connected when you hear the voice and it causes your inside to jump. You know I'm connected to that voice. I'm connected to that anointing, that revelation. That's huge. That's, every, that's how you know. Not just because not just because there's facts and figures and they, they've been to so many nations. All that works. All that we're doing. But that's not what you're connected to. What you're connected to is what created all that. And it'll reproduce it in you. When you get connected. That's the idea. It's for what's on the head to come on you. And so the Lord told us in this last meeting then, because he said, now, I want you to minister. And so he, this is what he called it in the teaching. And really, I was dealing with the name of Jesus. And uh, he called it the partnership portal. And I ministered over. And then he said to me at the end of it, he said, I want you to create a partnership portal. So right now, I'm just praying about that this afternoon, John. How, how are we going to do that, you know? But we gave out a, like a QR code on the card where they could go get access to some meetings we had just done, supernaturally done. The Lord said, you're not finished. In fact, it's where I'm headed. I'm headed to Houston to keep my word to them because when we got in that meeting, the anointing was so strong, he said, you're not finished yet. So tomorrow night, I've got an assignment to finish up that particular thing in that area. But all the partners in that meeting now can connect and go to it, and you can be a part of it if you want. Last year, is this the last meeting of this conference? Are you getting, okay. So tomorrow night, they could if they wanted, log on. But the bottom, the bottom line is this, is uh, in fact, tomorrow night, I'm going to be ministering on how to open shut doors. Mm. There's an anointing. There's so many people that have lost opportunities and missed things and have given up on it. They don't even understand they have the authority. to open something that looks like it's lost forever. There's restoration in the room. Glory to God. Mm. In fact, we can, we can tap into that tonight. It's not what I'm to do, but yet it's in the room. So, the, so we never, so partnership is that. Two people have a part. So point being is that we never, ever like to enter into any partnership without being the one that sold the first seed. And so we've got partnership packets on the table. It's not product for sale. 
is something we want to sow. If you're led to connect with us, they're on the table for you to come receive. And, for example, uh, whatever, what, yeah, here it is. This is our latest partnership letter. No, it's not our latest one. This is a partnership letter to give you an example of what you'll be receiving because it's not a newsletter asking you to support a project. It is a letter written because of the authority and the anointing of the commission on our life to teach you how to harvest. This one says, this one is absolute authority. I'm sure you guys probably have received it. Praise the Lord. Did you have that? Praise the Lord. Amen. And this is on the table. It's uh, 15 different things. Do you have one of these? This is why we preach faith. And based on last night, <laughs> I think we can find out why, right? Praise the Lord. But this is just a, a few of the things. We're going to update this immediately as well with the partnership portal. But we do have them available. And on the back, if you feel that you're, you're the Lord starting you to connect monthly, then what, what I'm going to ask you to do, because we can't do our part of the partnership if this doesn't happen. Because when we're in an area like this meeting, let you know where we are or, or, or anything where there's a free gift to the partners or a message we get. That's what this partnership portal is about. It's about us getting something to you, not getting something from you. Because if we can get revelation to you and you can harvest, you know, you'll know your part of the connection of what you're to do. And so, but we would need you to fill this in at the table, uh, right legibly, so we don't have to pray in tongues and, you know, figure it out here. <laughs> and we definitely need your email. Now so many things are electronic that we can send you a link and you can get it on your phone and you can tap it and hear the whole message right on your phone. And that's that partnership portal. That's where we're headed. Glory to God. And we're going to be sending that to all our partners. And so, uh, and then if the Lord stirs you up to, to certainly to prayer, believe, and then, you know, to, uh, to support, then financially to get this gospel out. Because now, literally, it's going beyond you. So whether or not you're our monthly partner, here's the deal. If you've sown in this meeting, you're already a partner with this meeting. Right? So take advantage of that anointing. So that's the thing. And uh, glory to God. So I just want to encourage you, but you need to leave this at the table. Because when we get home without it, we can't fulfill our part of the partnership. And then people wonder, well, I didn't get anything from them. Well, we've got to have the information. You see what I'm saying? So, and then what's on the table uh, like this, uh, this particular packet has two books, Best Life, Blessed Life, Glory to God, and Invisible Strength, the Guide to Supernatural Restoration. And these books are yours. We want, to, we want to be the first one to sow the seed in the partnership. Glory to God. But uh, in order to take that home with you, we would ask that we can get this back so we can do our part of the rest of the partnership. Amen? Fair enough? Amen. All right. Praise God. So anyway, I need to uh, either plant this or something. <laughs> we'll just take it. Huh? Yeah, okay. All right. We'll get it to you, buddy. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Oh, isn't the Lord good? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So understand... Let, well, let's just get started. I know what we're supposed to do. We're already started, so let's do this thing. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness, the glory of God that's swirling in the room. Father, I see it and sense it like the pool of Bethesda, that the waters are already stirring, and, the, and whoever will get in there can have anything they're asking for and behold from whatever need they have. And Father, if they're led to connect and sow seed and minister into the budget of this meeting and support where they get revelation every week, I thank you today that the anointing is in here to release the supply of heaven, the provision of heaven, and the increase of a hundredfold on every gift. And we love you, and we bless you, and we magnify you, and we glorify you. You are here, and you are the same. You prove you're alive, and you're here in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory to God. Give the Lord a shout in the house. Hallelujah. Take your Bibles, please, and open them to the book of John. John's Gospel, chapter 1. We're just going to jump right in here. Glory to God. What a joy it is to be in Lubbock, Texas. Red Raider country. So we finna raid the devil. Glory to God with that red blood. Hallelujah. <laughs> John chapter 1. And I want to begin reading in verse 12. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have you found it? It says this, but as many as. Would that be you? Amen. So that's me. As many as received him. Woo. To them gave he. Mm. Woo. Power. Mm -mm -mm. Woo. Did you know power is transferable? Now understand this. Very important to understand this. Because last night we, under, we found out it's impossible. There's some things that without faith it's impossible to do. And uh, we could have a whole teaching going another direction, but it, we don't have time to do a whole seminar here. That's not what this is about. This is a Holy Ghost meeting. So let's just speak enough of what the Word the Lord wants to be said so our faith gets high so we can get this thing moving again. Glory to God. Take advantage of the portal we have right in front of us. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. Amen. My God. But one of the things we broke down is the word impossible. And the word possible is a compound word, possessibility. And the word I am means negative. It's in the front of the word, means not. It means you don't possess the ability. So we can see, I'll use, I'll use for example, Abraham's life and, and what is written of him in Romans chapter 4. Because what I would want anyone in the room to know by the Holy Ghost, because he made me to know, and so he would want you to know. Chronological age has nothing to do with this. You believed a lie. That your body's supposed to slow down. That All kind of things. No, no, no. According to the blood covenant, I mean, the essence of the blood covenant in Genesis 15, God told Abram, in the blood covenant, you will go to your fathers at a good old age. In other words, you're going to finish life, fulfill everything I told you to do, and you're not going out of here till you're finished. And you'll be strong until that's done. Now, that covenant caused him to father a child at almost 100 years old. And his wife at 90. No. Faith did that. Faith did that. Which means faith does what we talked about last night. It's the portal to the Zoe life of God. Faith taps you're going to live forever because you believed. Mm. That's access to eternal life. And it doesn't just access that life once where your sins are forgiven and you just keep a stiff upper lip and live the best you can down here and then go to heaven when you die. He didn't like put all your rewards up there waiting on you. No, no, no. They're right here in the ugly now and now. I mean, come on. Last time I checked, demons don't, aren't going to heaven. So why do you need deliverance in heaven? No, he sets a table right here in the presence of your enemies. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want right now. Because there is no lack in heaven. So why does there need to be a supply? It, it's fuel. There's no death there. He didn't take everything he promised you and put it up there. It's already there. Death doesn't get to go there. Pain doesn't get to go there. Curse doesn't get to go there. Sickness doesn't get to go there. Demons don't go there. You don't need power over the devil in heaven. You need power over him here. And what good is Christianity if it doesn't give you power over the devil? Well, that's who we're dealing with here. The one coming to steal, kill, and destroy, right? 
So if we can't get your life changed, we're fools for being here. We need to go to the movie and eat some popcorn or something. But if we met and you will leave differently because we met with a collision with a power from another world that won't leave you like you are, then we've come to the right place and then you've met the right person. Glory to God. Woo! Glory. Because if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he can do in this room tonight what he's always done. He's going to prove this tomb is empty. Right, my brother? Woo! Now, hey, we talked last night, and here's what I'm going to say to you and everybody in the room. Just like in Acts 16, when the Apostle Paul went to preach, and they put him in, in prison at midnight, and they sang praises, and an earthquake hit. Every door blew off, every chain fell off, and everybody was loosed. Not just Paul, everybody was loosed. Not just Paul, every chain, every door. So probably nobody in this room can relate to it like that man right there. But I'm going to tell you by the Holy Ghost. You're not that man. That door's open. What are you still doing inside? You get up and you walk out. That's what you do. And the prison of sickness is no different than those iron bars. He blew it apart. You can't be held in that prison. You're not under the curse. You are set free. Glory to God. More than pardoned, more than paroled, your sins are remitted. Cast as far as the east is from the west. The man, that man that did that stuff does not exist anymore. Old things are passed away and I'm brand new. How about you, glory be to God? Now faith in Abraham's body made his body, which was dead and unable to produce life, made his body alive. Sarah's womb was dead. Her body could not produce life. Faith made it live. Come on, come on. So I'm going to show you something here. Stay in John 1, all right? So don't, uh, uh, hey, we hadn't, read, we hadn't even read that whole verse yet. <laughs> Go with me to Romans chapter 4. Look what it says. Woo! Glory to God. I came to have church. Am I in the right place? I mean, you know, the four of us aren't going to have to have church all by ourselves. We'll just grab, we'll grab a fifth and sixth partner and get uh, Pastor Delay and his wife and put them in a do do and we'll just have church all by ourselves. Are y'all going to join? Yeah, glory to God. Romans chapter 4, look at this. Woo, glory to God. Verse 19, look at this now. This is huge. I said this is huge. And being not weak, in faith. Do you see that? Yes, sir. He considered not his own body now dead when he was at a hundred years old. Now that he had the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Do you see that? Yes, sir. Say weak. weak. Unbelief. unbelief. Now say unbelief. unbelief. Or make you weak. Make you weak. Come oh come on now. Yes, see you're weak spiritually. When you don't believe. But he was strong, strong in faith. Go right thank God. Faith will make you strong. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 See, on the cross, he exchanged. That was the great trading post. Right? He was sinless. We were the sinner. He took on our sin and we became his righteousness. By his stripes, we were healed. So he took our sickness, which was, right? And we got his healing. He went to hell in our place and died so we could live. Well, understand what happened here. He became weak. Oh, come on now. That's what the scripture actually says. In Romans 5, let's just read it. Look at, we're already in Romans 4. Look at Romans 5. <clears throat> Glory be to God. It says here in verse 6, For when we were yet without strength. Do you see that? Yes, without strength. Christ in due time 
died for the ungodly. That means that, that faith, something will happen to you when you believe what he did for you. Because we were too weak to do it on our own, so he took our weakness that we might tap into his strength. The secret of faith, the very secret of faith itself, is not to become such strong believers you never experience weakness, but to learn how to exchange our weakness for His strength. The Holy Ghost is the strong spirit. When you're under His presence, when you're under His influence, you become strong. And that's what Hebrews 11 says. Let's look at Hebrews 11. We're working our way through something. Are y'all with me? All right, go with me to Hebrews 11. Woo! Glory to God. Notice what it says here in Hebrews 11. It talks about, I mean, he gave this whole list. Because that's where we were last night. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Right? The evidence of things not seen. We went down through the first six verses. Without faith, it's impossible. So if you don't have faith, it's impossible. You don't have the ability to please God. You don't have any ability to access these rewards. And then everything he did in this relay race of the ages was people who through strength from another world changed their world. Glory be to God. Framed their world, right? Yes, and he has this whole list down through the ages. And finally, he's like me. He's preaching so long that he says, I got more to say, but I don't have time to say it. Yes, That's literally what he says. He literally says here, and this is huge, by verse 32, and what more shall I say? For time would, tell, time would fail me to tell. In other words, if I wrote about all these guys, <laughs> I don't have enough time to, to preach everything you need to know about it. So understand that I've already written what you need to know. And this is what he said. Time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David also, Samuel, all the prophets... Who through faith, yes, sir. Woo! somebody say through faith. through faith. See, you need to understand, people say, well, I'm a prophet. And they go around prophesying to everybody, but they live such an unstable, wavering life. They don't have the qualifications to be a prophet. They're not stable enough to know whether what they're saying is right, because half of what they say doesn't come to pass because they're goofy. Because they're no more prophet than I am Uncle Sam. <laughs> First thing you need to know about prophets is they live by the word, but number two, they live by faith. So a prophet's anointing isn't for himself, it's for others. So if he's going to receive healing, he's got to do it with his own faith just like you do. I may be anointed, lay hands on the sick and work miracles, but when I, when I deal with the enemy trying to make my body sick, I'm no different than you. That anointing's on me to minister to you, but it's not on me to live victorious. What I have to do to live victorious is the same thing you've got to do to live victorious for the just to live by faith. And here he says, the prophets. Say the prophets. the prophets. So back up one verse there. Who through faith, see it? Who through faith. Of the prophets. See that? Of the prophets, colon. Next verse. Who through faith. Which means every prophet lived by faith. Anything they did, they did by faith. And all of the things that saying they did, what did they do? Subdued kingdoms. Mm. Things that were out of order and wrong, faith made it right. They worked righteousness. They obtained promises. They shut the mouths of lions. Daniel went in that lion's den, and that lion got locked jaw, all because Daniel's faith wouldn't let them open their mouth. Come on now. You lock those lines down, man. <laughs> Woo! And you, you, you have obtained like precious faith. You have the same God faith. You, glory be to God. Maybe before I say something else here, I ought to just deal with that for a minute because I never can anymore. I realize this. There's just not enough folks that know this. The body of Christ is not living in this. They don't know that there's a giant killer in them and they just need to let him loose. They don't understand. They literally have the substance inside of them already that will overcome the whole world. 
if they just cut it loose. It's the God kind of faith. See, people think there's all kinds of faith. You know, well, I'm the Baptist faith. I'm of the Methodist faith. Well, I'm of the, no, no. I'm a Catholic faith. I'm of a Protestant faith. Huh? Let me explain something to you. There is no such thing as a Baptist faith and a Methodist faith. See, you're just trying to describe denominations and stuff. That's not faith. Faith is a force, a supernatural substance. You either have it or you don't. And there's not male faith and female faith, young faith and old faith, rich faith and poor faith, educated faith and uneducated faith. There's just faith. And God has dealt to every man, and that's mankind, the measure of faith. You couldn't be born again without it. You had to have it to get born again. And if you're born again and know you're going to heaven, you already have this substance on the inside of you. I already got it. Woo! I've already got it. <laughs> I've already got it. So we look at the we look at Paul and Peter and James and all of that. And we say, woo, if I could just have faith like that. But let's see what Peter wrote about it. You want to see what Peter wrote about it? Yeah. Let's just talk about that for a second. Just, just a couple of things here. Because I absolutely hear some sacred cows going, Mrrr. they're bleeding. I mean, I've been kicking them in the side. They're bleeding, but I'm about to cut their head off right now. Because you've been taught a bunch of unbiblical, traditional nonsense on a Sunday morning that came straight out of the pit of hell. Because the shield of faith will quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. And the wicked one doesn't want you to know that you have something that he cannot overcome. And the day you find it out, you'll walk in victory and he'll be under your feet. And it'll be history. The things you've been dealing with for four generations, you can break it off of your family line. Because the substance that created the world is in the room, it's in you, and it will create your world. Woo! Shout it out. I have faith. Woo! Woo! I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. So let me just tell you. Jesus, our Lord, Everything he said, he couldn't say it unless he heard his father say it. So if Jesus said it, God's the one said it. Mm. And he said, he said, nothing is impossible to them that believe. Our Lord said it. Anything. Makes anything possible. Yes, sir. That means if you have faith, and you do, then you have already right now in you the substance of the impossible. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. So look at this. See, we have this, all these crazy ideas about it. Because we think faith is a feeling. And I'm all excited. I had, a, I had a goose bump on top of my goose bump. I knew I was using my faith. <laughs> <laughs> we walk by faith, not by sight, you know. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, I know. Praise the Lord. So let's look at this real quick. I want you to see it with your own eyes. Now, you know, just because I'm quoting it doesn't mean you know it. <laughs> Which means you need to open your Bible and look at it. All right, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Who's writing this? Well, the title pretty much gives it away. Peter. <laughs> 2 Peter verse one, chapter 1, verse 1. Read it together with me. Are you ready? And we're going to put it on the monitor. Please, please, please. Because I want you to see it in your Bible and up here. Simon Peter. So now that makes it clear. Which one? A servant and an apostle. The apostle. Simon Peter that walked on water. 
he knows a little something about this because he walked out there on water and he began to sink and Jesus said it was your faith issue. Because <laughs> he really wasn't one the water wasn't the substance he was walking on. Oh, come on now. You see? So he says, to them. That's everybody's writing to, right? That have obtained. What? What now? What have we obtained? Like precious faith with who? So that means the faith the apostles walked in in the book of Acts. I have that same faith. Glory to God. Let's look at another verse. It's just kind of, it's just like these stairs here. Okay, so, woo, man. This is kind of like, you know, some folks treat this idea like, okay, now we way down here, you know, we, we, we just trying to get in the minor leagues, you know, you know, so you got, now, now this is the way, this is the way most tradition teaches it totally and absolutely completely opposite of the scripture. They know nothing about believers authority and that man's created in God's image and dominion. Tradition wants to make you no unworthy worm. So here's the way they see it. If you know anything about baseball, you know you got the minor leagues. So you got single A, double A, triple A, and the majors, right? right? So this is the way that denominations see it. And you say, well, how do you know that? Because I was coaching a baseball team with a guy one time. My kids were little, and uh, he was Southern Baptist. And he said, well, this, this is how I see it. He was using the baseball analogy. He said, you know, you and me, uh, like we're little peons. We're, we're down here. we in we, we just hope we can make it into the minor leagues. Follow me now. The apostles now. This is Peter, James, and John, those boys. You know, because he, he didn't believe miracles still happen today. It happened when the last apostle died. Now, can't you imagine this? John's the oldest apostle. Don't you know, surely, if miracles passed away when the last apostle died, somebody would have known that. Can you imagine? He's sitting there going, ooh, ooh. can you imagine the line down the street and around the block that'd be waiting to get in to see him before he went to heaven so he could get their miracle? <laughs> I mean, think how, how foolish that is. <laughs> so here's what he told me. He said, you and I, we single A. And then <clears throat> Peter, James, and John, those boys, they double A. Then the angels... Boy, I really, I just didn't even, he was so steeped in this that I'd have had to do CPR on him if I'd have told him angels were my servant. <laughs> so he got Peter and James and John, those boys underneath the angels, the angels are AAA. <laughs> and you know, God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, they in the major leagues. <laughs> That's the way he's on it. That's the way most folks see it. They wouldn't admit it. That's the way most of them see it. Because they don't know the Bible. They don't know God. They don't know who they are in Christ. They don't know what to have. But let's let the Bible talk to us. So that we're not just trying to figure it out because we went to a church that was famous for believing nothing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gal <laughs> Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Let's read this one. All right, now. Are you sure? You take a deep breath and loosen your belt now. If you can't handle it, just don't, just don't scream run out the door and let everybody know that you disagree. Like, Because <laughs> I hear that cow getting restless again. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, in the flesh, while I'm here on earth, in my flesh, this life in my flesh that I'm living right now, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Woo! I just found out something. I don't just have Peter and James and John's faith. I got the very same faith Jesus Christ of Nazareth used when he was here in the flesh. 
Ooh. That doesn't stop there. You know, Jesus said, he seen me, he seen the Father. <laughs> Whatever I hear my Father say, that's what I say. Whatever I see my Father do, that's what I do. So let's go to Mark eleven twenty two. <laughs> huh? The Greek language here, it's a num number of verses, have faith in God, have, but that word in is a preposition that can, can be translated in any number of ways. In the Greek, it literally says, look at it, this is Jesus talking to you okay. and me. Okay. Have <laughs> yes. the faith of God. what he told his disciples. Now Jesus couldn't have said that had the Father himself not told him to say it. Jesus couldn't have dispensed that had the Father not told him to dispense it. What kind of faith do you think Jesus is walking in? What, okay, let me ask you this. If God's going to give you faith, God has dealt to every man. Romans 12, 3. The, the measure of faith. God has dealt it. So God gave it. Okay, explain to me. What other kind of faith does God have to give? What other kind of faith does God, is he going to reach in there into Gabriel and get some faith and give it to you? If God gave you faith, whose faith did he give you? So I'm not scrapping around here in a single A ball just hoping God would Deliver me from this sickness that I think he actually sent to teach me something. Listen, the kingdom divided against itself won't stand. Why is God going to destroy his own kingdom to make me sick and then come heal me? That makes him a schizophrenic. I don't serve a schizophrenic God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, so now we're talking about faith. This is the substance of things hoped for. I hope for something. Look at this now. I'm going to show you a verse here. Are you ready? I just want to, I just had this in my heart so strong to just keep going down this line. Now look what it says. I'm going to give you three verses out of Hebrews 11. We were there. Let's go back to Hebrews 11. Look at, number, look at verse 11 and 12. Are you ready? And then we're going to look at one more verse. Hebrews 11, 11. Through faith, Sarah. Say, through faith. Through faith. Sarah herself did what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What did she receive? Strength. So strength is there waiting to be received. Glory to God. I don't care how weak you feel. We don't operate by our feelings. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So Sarah received strength in her body, which was on up in years and unable to do what God promised. Sarah received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, which means faith will cause things to happen even though they should have happened long ago and you missed the opportunity. Oh, come on now. Because she judged him faithful. Amen? And because of that, look at verse 12. What faith will do? What will the God kind of faith do? Therefore sprang even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars in the sky of multitude, sand which is by the seashore and noon. Now let's go back to verse 32. What more shall I say? Time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Samson and David and you know, Barak and Jephthah and those boys who through faith, say through faith, through faith. and all the prophets, Samuel and all the prophets, who through faith, through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, right? Stop the mouths of lions. Let's go to verse 33. I'm, I'm in front of you there. <laughs> now let's go to 34. I'm in front of that. Quench the violence of fire. Now look, I want you to see it. That means Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of that fiery furnace. Faith was the shield that kept fire from touching them. See that? 
escape the edge of the sword. Now look at this next phrase. What does it say? Out of weakness. Out of weakness, we're made strong. Glory to God. So many people, they never understand that the very strength that raised Jesus from the dead is accessible to them their entire physical life through faith. It has nothing to do with chronological age, money in the bank. Education. You've got that substance in you now. We've kind of turned the corner here. I can sense it. It's coming alive in everybody. You feel it rising up in you? That's your faith. That's your faith. The God kind of faith in you. The substance of the apostles in me. I can do this. I see. I see I can do this. I can do this. I see I can do this. Glory to God. So let's look at something faith did. This is huge. Let's go back then to the book of Acts, right where we started. When we talked about Peter and John going through Gate Beautiful, let's just see what it describes. What does it say? Now something's going to come alive to you. Let the scriptures come alive to you. Notice what it says in verse 6. Then Peter said, Acts 3, 6, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give out of thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lift him up, and immediately. And look, notice what, it, what does it say? Immediately. immediately his feet and ankle bones. Oh, did what? Let's say you're dealing with a pancreas that's not working. It's just not. Then that anointing comes inside of you. It's like a lightning bolt. It just, and your pancreas is sitting in there jumping around in the name. Next thing you know, it receives strength to function like it was originally created. It was weak. It couldn't, it didn't have the output. It could it's like a battery in your car. Yeah. See, you can have power. It doesn't mean you're totally dead. It just means I don't have enough power to turn the engine over. Come on. Come on. You can sit in your car and turn on the key, and the lights will come on, and the dash will come on, and the doorbell dinger, ding, 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 and then you turn it, and it goes, woo, 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 woo. How come? Because, and I wasn't a dog barking, by the way. That was your engine turned over. <laughs> what's, what's going on? There's power. There's just not enough to turn it over. See, that's... <clears throat> so the battery is weak. Oh, come on now. You see that? It's not strong. <clears throat> Faith accesses the power. To flip that thing over. Glory to God. Woo! Didn't this guy's life, after 41 years, faith had the power to restore four decades to him. Amen. Glory to God. Recreative restoration. Wow, 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 wow. So as we read on down, this is huge. Notice what it says in verse 16. Because they, they were just challenging them. How did it happen? How did it happen? Look at verse 16. And his name. Mm. through faith in that name. Look at the phrasing. Hath made this man strong. Jesus did it. How did he do it? Through that name. Whatever strength is inside that name came into that man and created new feet. You see that? Now, now, whatever the name can do, if I have faith in that name, it activates the ability inside that name. So whatever the name can do, I can do. Glory to God. Because I had the right to use that name. In fact, let's look at this just a little bit more. 
I want you to look at Acts 4, verse 10. Right before I left the hotel room, the Lord wanted me to read this verse. There's so many verses we could read, but when he says, I want you to use a verse, that means something's going to come off on the people. Oh, glory be to God. Amen. So he just told me, he said, read this verse. And it's Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Are you ready? And his name. Look now. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name. Woo, glory be to God. Are you see this? That by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. The name did it. Well, who did it? Jesus or the name? Did Jesus do it or did the name do it? Well, according to this, the name is a him. According to this, him is his name. So we need to then go back and look at John 1.12 with fresh eyes. Are you ready? Yes, now let's go to John 1.12. It says, as many as. Would that be you? Yes, sir. Now I know that I probably vacated Acts 4 a little too quickly because two verses down from Acts 4.10 where it says the name did it and by him, by verse 12 it says, and there is no other name. No other name. Now listen, the way it phrases it. In fact, let's look at it real quick because the capstone is John 1, 12. So we need to go back and get to it right here. Acts 4, 12. Look at it. Look at it. No other name. Say no other name. There is no other name. Under heaven. Can you bring that up for me? Acts 4, 12, please. No other name. Under heaven. Given among men. No other name. That name is not only in heaven, now it's under heaven. <clears throat> and now that name is given among men. And by that name, any man can receive every benefit of salvation. Yeah. Now you know we're going to John 1, so keep your finger there. Let me quote this one more linchpin verse before we go there. It just gives you an idea. This is all over the word. Psalm 103, verse 1. We're going to read two verses. Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2. Look at it. Look at it. So, suddenly it's going to just come off the page to you. If you guys will follow me up here, I'd love for everybody to see it on the big monitor. I'm just going to wait a minute. Slow down a little minute because it's just working. This is like now... We've hooked up the cables to your battery. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Look at this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless. Bless what? What are we blessing? What are we blessing? Holy name. Now look at verse 2. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Forget not all of his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all of his benefits. And then look at verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities? Healeth all thy diseases. Now look, these benefits. The, all of the benefits are inside the name. Oh, glory to God. Do you see that? It's the portal. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that's within me, bless his holy name. Forget not one of all of his benefits. Who forgives all thy iniquities, heals all thy diseases. So the benefit of healing is inside the name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's why they were praying in Acts 4 and said, Lord, grant unto your servants that they may speak your word with boldness by stretching forth your hand that signs and wonders may be done by the name. So the name, listen now, the name spoken in faith is the stretched forth miracle hand of God. That name, according to Acts chapter 4, is all of the word spoken all at once in boldness. See how it's connected? 
The Word became flesh. We called His name Jesus. Emmanuel, God with us. Glory to God. You see that? So when I say, in Jesus' name, I just threw every promise in both covenants, whack, right in the devil's face. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing it? All right, well, let's just, hey, hey, we're so close to the finish line. Let's just race toward it right now. Glory to God. John 1, 12. As many as. Now we see the name is no longer in heaven. It's under heaven. Now we see it's given among men. Now we see Peter and John used that name by faith in that name, and it made that man become something. So now we see that they had the right to use it that it was theirs to use, that power was given through that name. So when they used that name, glory to God, it did something yes, in restoring that man's life. Hallelujah. Because all the benefits were inside of it. Yeah. That name's in this room right now. Yes, it's among men right now. Yes. Woo! So now we are part. You are part of the as many as. That's you. You're right there, right in the Holy Writ, right there. As many as, that's you. As many as received him. I'm going to be real slow because Revelation is flowing now and you're not just like reading the verse. As many as received him. To them gave he power. Power to do what? To become the manifested children of God. Even to them that believe on his name. You see it? Believing on his name is receiving him. Oh, come on now. You see it? Faith in the name is not faith in a name. Faith in the name is faith in him. So if you don't have any faith in the name, you actually don't have any faith in him. Glory to God. Glory to God. But if I've got faith in the name, I have access to all of the power that is inside that name. Because that name represents a person. So that means when I say, in the name of Jesus, it's actually not me laying hands on you. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Yes, sir. That's why people do all kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the name does it. Woo! The name's doing it. Woo! That's why sickness goes, you guys, <laughs> ar, 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 runs off like a dog between his tail. It'll tuck his tail between his legs and run out of here and never show his face again. Because the name attacked it. The name attacked it. Glory to God. That's not by might. Not by power. But by my spirit. Woo! So your might, your power, not going to get it. Not by might, not by power. By my spirit, saith the Lord. John 14, 26. But the comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Mm. So when that name is used, by faith in that name, the Father sends something. Oh, glory to God. You see it? It's the sending mechanism. In the name! Inside that. That's just like... I might as well be hooking you up to a defibrillator. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Yes, sir. 
Huh? Yes, sir. Clear! <laughs> you get it, you see? It's the name! Mr. Miyagi don't have anything on this. Oh, no. It's the name. It's the name. It's the name. It's not Banzai. It's not Buddha. It's Jesus. It's Woo! Glory is that name. It's above every name. Woo! 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 Glory to God! Hallelujah! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! Yes, sir. Glory to God! I heard the Spirit of God say, Glory to God! Yeah, I see that. They catch you, Fiesta. Strange. Okay. It's not really strange, but it's just. He doesn't tell me to do this very often. In his ministry, there was a blind man. And he laid hands on him. And when he took his hands away, and I love the King James, he asked him if he saw aught clearly. <laughs> and I've never met aught, so I don't know if he saw him clearly. <laughs> what he meant was, <laughs> he was blind, can you see? You know, <laughs> <laughs> so and he said I see men as trees walking huh <laughs> anybody ever had defibrillator paddles and put them on more than one I hope not in here but you know have you seen it done <laughs> but, boo, <boom>. still flatlined right <laughs> <laughs> oh, they fired that thing back up. It says he laid hands on him a second time because it jump started him, but he didn't get the full manifestation. You see that? It didn't say he prayed for him twice, it said he laid hands on him twice. So that's what happened to Naaman the Syrian with that leprosy. He had to dip seven times. And I heard the Lord say, I just heard the Lord, the Holy Ghost. I was over here, uh, okay, I'm looking into it because I know, I just know in the Spirit I'm released to minister to you again like last night. Anybody that wants it. And he said, tell them <laughs> if they'll use their faith by that anointing. Now these are some of my words. I'm trying to get where you can understand what I saw just like that. He made me to know it. He said, I'm going to finish what I started. He said, when I started last night, I'm going to finish it. He said, the power's in the room to finish it. That's right. Glory to God. I need some help, guys. So I'm going to say to you by the authority of the name of Jesus, in the name, finish what has been started. Rise and be whole in every area of your life. Look at me. In the name. In the name. Yeah, in the name. That's why you had to come back tonight. You got it last night. It jump started you. It opened up things. But tonight, woo! I know, but now it's finished. In the name. While I'm ministering to people by the Spirit of God, you just let that anointing. It's going to come up through your toes, up into your ankles. You're already feeling it. Coming up into your knees. It's going to hit your hips. It's going to come up through your organs. It's just going to overwhelm you. 
It's going to finish. There's a finishing anointing. There's a finishing anointing. I said, there's a finishing anointing. Glory to God. So let me just say this, and uh, I'm just going to do what I'm supposed to do. As many as received him, to them gave he power. So I want you to understand, power is a gift, but even power has to be received. There could be enough power to go, and it could pick you up, blow you against that back wall, and you get up sick. Because it's not about the power coming on you, it's about you receiving it. It's going in and getting the work done. Glory to God. It's letting it in. You see that? It's letting it in to finish the work that has been started. Glory to God. There's resurrection power in the room. And in my name, I'm going to sweep out the residue with a broom of a Holy Ghost wind, and you will see that the spirit of betrayal will not even have left a seed. I'm about to blow the, tra- the, the residue away from the threshing floor, and you will see that things will be brand new forevermore. And it'll be like by the time you assemble again when you walk through the door, it'll be like a new mantle at the core. I'm going to drill down and take out what is rotten before, and you shall see that restoration has come to thee, and this vision is now once again set free. Glory to God. There's a finishing anointing. There's a finishing anointing. There's a finishing anointing, and it is here to destroy what tried to divide and limit and and bleed off and kill and weaken. And it's a oh glory be to God. 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 In the name. In the name. In the name. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the Comforter, (laughs) which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father has sent in my name, receive him. Glory to God, receive him. So when hands are laid on you in the name, receive whatever the Spirit. Just don't even worry about it. You might wake up on the floor. You might just be uncontrollably laughing and rolling in the floor. You might be bent double and frozen. I don't know. Who cares? Just let the name do what the name came to do. Glory be to God. Oh, he came to finish what he started. I said he came to finish what he started. There's resurrection power here, brother. Glory to God. Glory to God. I heard the Lord say "This, this ministry will never be the same because of this meeting that has released the name. <laughs> I'm just convinced of something, and so I don't want to elongate this anymore. I mean, he's already doing it. You know, we're not really waiting on a healing line or anything, really. It's already happening. You feel it? You know it? You see it? Are you sure of it? Are you receiving it? Woo! Hey! Woo! Hey! Hey! Woo! Hey! So I'm talking about the name. The name, the name. The name does it. The name. That's the stretch for You say, well, I don't understand why you can't even, you know, you're, you're just a few feet away from them, you know, and they just do like, Bam! like that. See, I don't understand that. It's because it's the name. The name is the hand of God stretched forth. <laughs> no more. No more. This attack against your life to try to stop it short, take it out early. These things, there'll be no more of this in the name. That went right there. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. There'll be no more of this. Receive ye strength for this leg of the journey. Evidently, the Holy Ghost literally wants to go. Just like he breathed into Adam, he wants to breathe into this assembly. Strength. Strength from on high. If that is you and you say, there's something been started in me, that I'm ready to have finished. I don't mind staying, I'll lay hands on one person or every person 
or five people. That's not the point. We came to get the job done. Because the name is here, doesn't it? Glory to God. Woo! But as many as want to receive a power and something came in you tonight that kicked you over the top with your faith to totally receive the fullness of what you saw last night. That's what I get. Is that, did something else happen to you? It's like a finishing game. It's like I see it now. It's like I see it now. It's like I see it now. I can, I can see. <laughs> Watch her. Power of God's all over. I said, well, what happened to that woman? The name did that. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus isn't just up here to, on, the, on the carpet. He's, he's walking his aisle with resurrection glory. Woo! The name, <laughs> the name did that. So if that's you, and uh, now here's the thing. I can feel that flow, and the anointing's very strong. It can go either direction. You know, the shallow rivers make the most noise. And uh, I'm an apple pie guy. I like folks blowing against the wall, too. But the music can carry a flow, you know. And so I'm just, I'm just going to say, right now I'm comfortable with this. But if it gets to moving fast, we're not going to like slow down our receiving to match the music. No, we receive quick, in a hurry. I mean, he's in a hurry to get it to you. Aren't you in a hurry to receive it? <laughs> One more night with the frogs? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Under any other circumstances, that would have a different context. In the name. <laughs> <laughs> all right if that's you now that's you now let's don't slow this up anymore if that's you and there's something that you just kicked over the top like this sweet lady i saw it i mean spirit of faith all over her she said oh i see that i said she saw it she got over get up here quick move 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 praise the lord there you go thank you ma'am just give me room to walk give me room to walk hallelujah hallelujah that's perfect quickly that's what i don't want that music doing slowing folk down hallelujah glory to god Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Whoa! Whoa! In the name of Jesus. That name. Say it. That name. Say it again. That name. Oh, no. Say it like you mean it. That name. Don't get into this music. That name. Through faith in that name. Has made me. Everywhere whole. Yes. Woo! I received that in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We finish what the Lord has started in you. We finish what the Lord has started. We finish what the Lord has started. We finish what the Lord has started in you. We finish what the Lord has started in you. We cut the guts out of it. Oh, there it goes. Glory to God. In the name. Woo! There it went right there. In the name. Whoa, 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 whoa. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Nobody's trying to make it go down, but I need you to hear me. No, no, no. No, you don't. Listen to hear me. It's not about going down. It's about receiving the power. There it is right there. It's got to go in. You got to let it in. Hey, you got to let it in. All the way. All the way. Do you feel it going through you? I feel it going through you. Okay. Well, then hang on. Hang on. You let her have a chair then. That's fine. But the pa- no, look at look at me. Uh, no, uh, 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 no more. Don't ever uh, 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 don't, uh, 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 don't ever say the word hard again. Receiving from God is the easiest thing ever humans ever done. Not hard. I know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You have it. 
It's flowing in there now. It's flowing in there now. Let it do it. Let it finish its work. Let it finish its work. Let it finish its work. Glory to God. Glory to God. 